Today, some stopwatch tests of boot time for an Intel Optane on a Xeon D system running Windows 10. So this is an Intel Optane PCIe SSD, the P4800X, sitting inside an Intel Xeon D based system. Let me show you what that looks like. And this system, hang on a second, looks like this. If I go in, you'll see it inside the server. Now, very simple, uh, UEFI BIOS has been configured, so the BIOS is not set to dual mode, it's set to be UEFI only. And that's it. The reboot time is not about the BIOS time though, it's about when you start to see the uh, swirl when Windows starts versus when it finishes. So I have netplwiz.exe run to auto log into my desktop once I reboot this machine. Here's the driver I've installed. So if we look at properties driver, you'll see I'm on June 12th, 2017, which is the current driver as of today, August 20, sorry, September 24th, 2017. So it's time to reboot. Here we go. Build 1703, by the way. So the first part of the boot, I'm not even starting the stopwatch. Why? Well, I know it takes about a minute, but again, your motherboard, your system may vary. Another thing to point out is this is a PCIe 3.0 slot. So uh, doing such a test on an older system, well, probably won't make much difference because it's just boot time we're talking right about here, not raw benchmarking or raw throughput. Now I've already done a similar test with Windows Server 2016, but the feedback was, how about we try that with a client OS like Windows 10, which has less services well, it might have less services starting. I'm not actually sure about that at boot time. So another thing to look at will be when the desktop shows up, can I go to task manager and take a look at the CPU? Is it settled down or is the CPU still, you know, very busy at 10% or 50% or something? So we'll find out together here. All right, so I'm watching for the spinning pinwheel here to click start the stopwatch. That's when the bias is handed off and Windows has started to boot. There it is. Click here to make it bigger. And there it was, 7.2, 7.3, something like that. Now, if I bring up Task Manager and go to Performance, CPU is at 2%. So this machine's ready for action. And I actually have it networked. All right. Now, really shouldn't have it networked. And you might think, oh, isn't that going to break the ability to see what's going on? Not at all. This is an out-of-band connection here meaning uh, IKVM, what does that mean? That's the uh, way to remotely see the system through IPMI or built into a ZND motherboard like this super micro super server. Let's do another reboot. Let's see if this time I can reset that, get this to show big. So it's kind of annoying that uh, the Java version has this little resizing issue. So let me dump Java and go over to a different remote console. That's HTML5 based. I don't think that one has the resizing disappearance issue that you witnessed there. So that should be a little better look at the system booting. And I want to make sure it's in full high resolution. Yep, all set. Okay, got to get ready. So when this bias is done, again, we're going to see the swirly thing. That's Windows starting. A2 in the bottom right. Okay, so I hit stop right when the desktop appeared, about eight seconds. So, so far it appears you might be a little bit slower than I was on Windows Server 2016, which is a little bit surprising. So now just to make sure I'm not getting stuck with some silly artifact or something. Uh, the BIOS does have a setting where I can avoid this Supermicro logo and show whatever's echoed kind of behind the scenes, PCI bus enumeration, um, biases on the various PCI cards that someone may add, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to get rid of the Supermicro logo and see if that changes my measurement of boot time. Uh, the swirling pinwheel is 
not a perfect measure, and boot time is not a great benchmark. Uh, it's better to test my other synthetic benchmarks to test raw throughput to see if I'm getting what I should be getting out of the Intel Update. And it seems to be, uh, the answer seems to be yes when I've run ATTO Dispatch or Addo. Okay, but right now I'm just focused on some boot time testing. All right, so going into my BIOS here, I'm hitting delete to go into the BIOS configuration, turning off the super micro splash screens, and it failed. <laughs> it did not work. All right, so not sure why, but let's try again. So I'm seeing some um, slight sluggishness there, painting the screen. So I'm going to crank this to low. So at the expense of some visual uh, fidelity, uh, I don't actually notice any blurring problems or anything here. Um, I've reduced the amount of network traffic that's needed here and really being a little silly, I doubt that's going to affect much of anything as far as boot time testing, but I'd like to roll that out. All right, so coming up on the screen where it tells me to hit the delete key, that's when I want to mash on the keyboard like we've all been doing for decades on biases. Because it's kind of painful to have to wait for it to boot all over again if you miss it. So this time I hit it, entering setup, and here we go. Boot feature, quiet boot disabled. F4, save and exit. We're out of there. That's it on this system. That's all I got to do. Uh, the pinwheel again. So on the next boot, we should get rid of the splash screen. I don't know. Hard to say. Okay, what I'm going to do at the very end of this video is just fire off ATDO Dispatch and just show you what its speed is with the June 2017 NVMe driver from Intel. Not the inbox or included driver that you get with Windows 10. Uh, we, instead, I'm using the recommended, uh, most recently released driver that Intel offers for the P4800X, which is again, the new Intel Optane type of solid state drive. This should be among the world's fastest, or maybe the world's fastest boot times we're looking at here. So I'm getting ready to hit start now. We've got no logos this time, waiting for the spinning wheel. Okay, that's better. We've got a flag that shows up, then the spinning pinwheel, and now desktop. Eight seconds. All right. Well, these measurements are consistent enough that I'm pretty convinced that eight seconds seems to be my boot time. Not sure why it's a little bit slower than I was getting under Windows Server. Now we see the blurriness, 2% CPU. I'm going to go ahead and enable a network NIC on this thing again. Seriously doubt that has anything to do with boot time at this point. And Windows updates, by the way, have nothing to do, so I made sure of that. And there's nothing started on this machine or set to auto start. And all it is is a base build of Windows, by the way. If we look at apps and features, that's it. That's the default stuff you get when you install Windows 10 these days, by the way. There's a fair amount of stuff in that list. And there's the uh, Intel driver, as mentioned earlier. Not even sure what Keeper security is. Hmm. All right, it's quite a list. Anything obvious in auto start? over here. OneDrive. So, looks like I forgot to turn that off. That is a mistake. And I don't need that showing. All right. And if we go to taskbar, I can go ahead and say, whoa, spinning mouse wheel is not working out too great. Um, wow. There, got everything showing the taskbar because there's not much going on. In the next boot, we don't even have one drive. So we've trimmed things a little bit. And I'm going to go back to a disabled network connection. And let's see if I do a little better this go around. 
Okay, I reset the counter. I'm getting ready to hit start as soon as I see the Windows flag come up. That well, was probably a quarter second late. And about eight seconds again. Actually 8.00 just by chance. So one drive and that stuff didn't seem to affect it either. So that's it. Uh, it takes eight seconds on this particular system to boot a P4800X. I did mention I'm going to give you a little uh, look at ATDO Dispatch, and I don't have I don't have that installed or downloaded. So let me go grab that. Something peculiar happens with ATDO Dispatch, the older one anyway, and that is when you go to run it. Watch this at the default queued up the four. There you go. So I've only seen that on the Intel Opti. Not sure what to make of that, but that's what happens. So it adjusts this number and then runs it anyway. All right, and at this point, I'm just gonna flash forward to the end and also crank up visual fidelity so it's a nice clear screenshot for you. So here we go with the this benchmark. Normally, you don't run anything else at the same time, but I do want you to have a sense of how light on the CPU uh, synthetic benchmark like this can be. So that's part of the benefit in NVMe and low protocol overhead compared to SATA and SAS, we should see lower CPU utilization. All right, so I'll flash forward now to when we're done testing this flash device. All right, now I've run ATDO Dispatch before, doesn't seem to matter much on what settings I use, but I'm gonna go ahead and use high performance and see if we get any perceptible difference whatsoever. Okay, hard to say if that's statistically significant, the increase at uh, 16 and eight, but there's something maybe going on there. Um, this might've just been a blip or Windows got busy doing something, that little green drop there for the read. Either way, it uh, looks like you're getting a pretty good sense this is what the Optine performs like on the system and you now saw the boot time on Windows 10. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, other benchmarks have been run. I've got screenshots and uh, back in the article at tinkertry.com. And I actually have a bit of thermal testing too. If you look down here a little lower, you'll see I get into all of that, including the FLIR thermal camera. Good, so good viewing there for Stress testing, right? Does a FLIR thermal camera show anything? And the answer is no, no thermal throttling. It works great. So you see that when ATDO Dispatch doesn't dip at the end, there's no thermal throttling going on. You get locked on those numbers. Okay, so hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. And thanks for visiting tinkertry.com.